It's been 75 years since the Land Rover made its debut at the Amsterdam Motor Show. The British Army first started using them in 1949 and still has over 8,000. Her late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II was a big fan driving them at her estates and using them in ceremonial duties around the world. It's estimated that she owned at least 30 vehicles over the, 30, over the years that she was on the throne and uh, driving. To celebrate this most iconic British vehicle, I went to Surrey, arriving in the Land Rover's sleek offshoot, the Range Rover. Seventy-five years since the Land Rover was unveiled at the Amsterdam Motor Show. And they've been beloved by farmers, by the British Army, and by the royal family. Oh, and by producers of James Bond movies. This appeared in one, and a total of seven films have featured Land Rovers and Range Rovers. I'm here at Dunsfold in Surrey, where a collection was begun by Brian Bashel all the way back in 1968. I'm here to meet Richard Bedell, a trustee of the Dunsfold Land Rover collection. Richard, here we are celebrating 75 years of Land Rover, and it looks to me as though this is quite an early model. It's a very early model. It's a 1949, and uh, apart from being a 1949, it is rare in that it's fitted with a Rolls-Royce four-cylinder engine. The British Army decided that they'd like to try and have an engine that they, they had spare parts for and tried to fit it in one or two Land Rovers, but in fact it didn't work very well. And we've got the only example that's known of, of of the 30 that were built. How was the Land Rover devised in the first place? The Wilkes brothers, who owned the Rover Car Company during the war, made uh, aircraft components. And at the end of the war, they had a wonderful workforce, they had a wonderful building, and they couldn't get enough steel to build motor cars other than for export. And so they said, well, what do we do? How do we get this wonderful company going again? And they bought a Second World War Jeep and they took it to Anglesey where they had a holiday house, drew a picture of the, what they thought the rover for the land might look like and make it a bit more useful than a Jeep by having a an open back that farmers could use and that sort of thing and that is how the rover for the land started and they thought we'll just build these vehicles for a couple of years until we can get back to car production and then eventually the British Army gave them an order for a thousand vehicles and they suddenly thought well actually this rover for the land might, um, might be better than we thought. Sounds like it was an instant success then was it? Oh yes. They were very very attractive to farmers in particular the farmers didn't have a small vehicle that uh, they could take across the fields and, and, and work with, and uh, that's why the Land Rover became, became so popular. The Series 2, when is that in production? Uh, 1958, the Series 2 first appeared. So place the Series 2 for me in, 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 in the history of what it is to be British, really. <laughs> Well, it's the Land Rover. Uh, it's the Land Rover that, that most people on this earth recognise. Her Majesty the Queen used to drive a Land Rover regularly. I saw some wonderful pictures the other day in uh, Niger of Series 2 Land Rovers that are still being used every day. They haven't got wings on and they've got different size wheels. But the Series 2 keeps going and the Series 2 is a vehicle that everybody drives. Farmers love them. The army quite likes them. They're a terrific car. What did the British Army make of the Land Rover? The British Army had, had the Land Rovers right the way through until very recently. They are very strong and they can use them for anything they want. They're like Meccano sets. You know, you can, if you've got one with a hard top, you can take it off. If you've got one with a, a soft roof, you can take that off and put a hard top on. If you don't want a roof at all, you just take it off and it unbolts. You can mend, they always used to say, you can mend a Land Rover with an adjustable spanner and a screwdriver. Some of these cars come to you in pretty poor condition. Who restores them? The trustees of the collection arrange to have them restored, generally by friends of the collection, and Philip Bashall, who is the curator here, 
organises that for them to be restored and repaired and, and kept running. Well, this is a different kettle of fish, obviously a militarised vehicle. What's the story on this one? This is known uh, as a Pink Panther for the obvious reason that it's painted pink. And the reason that it's painted pink is that the RAF decided that uh, if vehicles were painted this colour on the sand, the silhouette didn't show up. And they told the, the SAS, and the SAS said, right, in that case, we're going to paint all our vehicles this colour, which is what they did. Um, it was effective, was it? Terribly effective. Mm. And this particular vehicle is, is one of a batch of vehicles which was designed to be able to sustain three men for three weeks with everything that was carried on it. That is sensational. It is. This vehicle must have had some adventures. Can you tell me about them? We know a lot of adventures which we're not allowed to talk about. <laughs> so this would be um, one of the gems of your collection. Maybe the moment to talk about the collection. Why does it exist? Uh, in 1968, when we started the collection, we realised that although Land Rover was only 20 years old, they didn't realise that they had a history mm -hmm. and, that, and that they were making the most wonderful vehicles which were about to be scrapped. And so occasionally we get a phone call from the chief engineer, a wonderful man called Tom Barton, who'd ring up and he'd say, uh, can you come up to the factory, please, in the next two or three days? There's a vehicle that needs saving. Mm -hmm. So we used to go up to the factory, pick them up and tuck them away, and that's how we've built up the collection over the last umpteen years. So this is about uh, restoration, but I've never seen a Land Rover like that. No, it is very, very special. It's called a Centaur, and you see it in the state that it's arrived with us. Uh, they made eight of these, and this is the last one built. We're going to restore it. Uh, we have it, we've just got it running and driving for the first time in many years and uh, we're really looking forward to the restoration. Now, have you anything else to show me? Yes, Michael. Come and have a look at our model collection. Not only a marvellous collection of vehicles, a terrific collection of models as well. Yes, it, we think it's probably the best model collection in the world of Land Rovers and Range Rovers. We'd actually been collecting our own models, but a wonderful man called John Parker left us his model collection about uh, 30 years ago. And I remember going up to Bristol thinking, oh, well, I need a couple of cardboard boxes. And it, it filled an entire Land Rover. And it's right to call them models, not toys, is it? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> How would you summarise? What is the point of the collection? First of all, we have saved unique, and I can use that word, unique Land Rovers, Range Rovers and Discoveries and Freelanders from being scrapped. Cars that were one-offs built by the factory and which we've saved. We've also saved many other cars which have been used for uh, very special events. And what about the future of the collection? Uh, we're a charity. We have a lot of sponsors, a, a really large number of sponsors, and we have friends of the collection who support us. We are uh, finishing off this building as a museum, and that will enable us to invite groups of people to come and visit the collection over the next uh, at least 100 years. So the public will be allowed to see the collection? Correct. It's been great being here, thank you so much. I need to go back to the railway station. Do you have a vehicle spare at the moment? Oh, I think we might find something interesting for you. And thank you very much for coming and seeing us. I I've really enjoyed it, thank you. Ah, oh, this looks uh, just the ticket. I've certainly enjoyed my visit, thank you so much. And best wishes for the future. Thank you, it's been a great pleasure. Railway station, please.